Welcome to rural Ontario, an essential piece that is often left out of the puzzle of opioid misuse. But why should this region, and more specifically, its youth, remain in focus? What makes rural youth any different from those in urban areas? To tackle this question, let's turn to the numbers, starting with 62%. That's the amount by which opioid overdose hospitalizations increased for youth aged 15 to 24 between 2007 and 2015. And with the problem of opioid misuse continuing to spread among young people, it is only a matter of time before this growing storm brings new challenges to Canadians at large. Now, let's shine the focus back to Ontario's population of rural youth. They're a population that, compared to their urban counterparts, not only report a greater use of prescription opioids for non-medical purposes, but also tend to start these practices at a younger age. And with rural youth reportedly having a 35% greater odds of past year prescription misuse compared to their peers in the city, the difference across the two groups becomes strikingly evident. But why is this the case? The issue is clear. Despite these statistics, rural youth continue to remain unstudied, untreated, and unheard. Now enter the Harvesting Insights study, where the team at the University of Waterloo School of Pharmacy worked with the Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Health, a nonprofit grassroots organization to better understand opioid misuse among the region's rural youth. Together with Gateway, the study, which was based in a town of 8,000 in southwestern Ontario, with reach across four rural counties, connected us with those working directly with youth, including program directors, public health workers, and educational representatives. The results? Opioid misuse in rural Ontario was found to revolve around three main factors. Trauma and social relationships where factors such as school bullying, peer pressure, family tensions, and poor parent-child relationships force youth to turn to opioids as a coping strategy. Ease of access, where current prescribing practices and illegally sold prescriptions places opioids within reach of youth. And the self, where the use of drugs becomes a sign of independence and a right to control one's own body and decisions. Yet, despite the risks that await rural youth, not all residents feel the same way about opioid misuse. In fact, some residents pointed out that people just don't talk about it, probably because it is a rural part and it's not seen on such a large scale like statistics for urban areas. The result? The problem remains hidden in the media and ignorance surrounding opioid users continues to muffle the cries of youth and treatment in rural areas is not much easier, with facilities being blocked behind kilometers of distance and lengthy wait times, access becomes a challenge. Coupled with the lack of advertising for pharmacy or community programs, many residents continue to remain both unaware of the available services and untreated as a result. Even for those who are, a lack of coordination and collaboration among distant rural care facilities takes away from the continuity of care. As youth work through mazes of medical contacts and appointment bookings, they grow discouraged by the distant idea of treatment. Research in rural areas also remains lacking, as poorer access to databases and health resources means less records are available for analysis. But we don't have to be left in the dark. In our study, we not only explored causes of rural opioid misuse, but also possible options for action. Strengthened leadership and coordination among care facilities, local awareness through community-based programs, increased medical care options, and education for all ages can help to create an open environment of support. And the journey has just begun. These are only the first steps and they certainly won't be the last. Let's continue to build on this foundation of research to fill in the knowledge gaps and ensure that all voices are heard.